everybody. Good to see everybody here today. Oh, I'm, I've been so excited for this class. Hope you guys are too, because we got a lot we could talk about. And we're going to hone in on a few, okay? Because this is a very broad topic. Now recording. Thank you, by the way. So we will get started and I'm going to ask you guys where you want to go related to psionics. But first, we're going to touch on what psionics is actually. First, I'm going to just let everybody come in real quick. And I'm going to share my screen. It's so good to see all of you for real. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Okay, so jumping right in, you guys hear me say psionics a lot, and you guys may hear others talk about psionics, and you wonder, okay, what actually is it? So psionics generally, for a broad term, is human paranormal phenomena, essentially. So anything that relates to paranormal, um, telepathy, and we're talking astral physics, all of that type of stuff that we're all into, everybody here is into, that is what psionics is. So from now on, when people ask, like, what are you into? And you're like, I, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't even want to say, like, spirituality because it sounds too, it sounds too woo-woo, right? And you want it to sound more professional. I just say psionics. And that's, it just feels right, too. So when it comes to psionics, there is so many different topics because essentially, like it says right here, it's the abilities, ability on harnessing the power of your mind or producing a particular effect with the mind. Now, this is their explanation for our consciousness, saying it's the ability of the mind and what we do with our minds, which, which is true, right? But as we know, there is more to it. Now, my guides were talking big about a certain topic, talking about a certain one. They wanted to talk about the 5D experience and basically 5D consciousness. But if you guys want to touch on another topic, I have, I have a whole list right beside me. So I'm looking over here. Okay, here is some things we could touch on and that we're going to touch on with these psionics classes. Now, remember, we're going to do this. We're going to have psionic classes basically every week. I'll probably do it same time on Tuesdays, uh, but we will do it every week. So for this one, we could talk about astral projection, elemental power, 5D experience, the clairs, communication with other beings, tulpas. I love tulpas, crystals, astral warfare, portals, densities, and time travel. Those were the biggest ones that i was like okay we do in these psionic classes we could delve into these one by one but you know what for this one let's keep it pretty general just because we're touching into psionics for the first time so if you guys want to touch on a certain topic any of those you can let me know and we'll dive in even if it's just asking questions you want to know more about like you're like well how can i create a tulpa or what are tulpas you want to talk about that go ahead or you want to talk about elemental powers you want to dive into your elemental power go on ahead this one is a very open class and to be frank with you i only have an hour but the next ones we're going to do a lot longer because you know we want to dive deep and i think i'm going to go live later too so you know we always just talk about psionics 24 7 like that's a tuesday literally <laughs> so it doesn't matter at all Okay, someone said, someone asked, she is, or someone said she is the Aquaman. We're talking about, who we talk, we're talking about Aaron, because Aaron, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Aaron, you got a past life memory. Did you want to tell us about it? Maybe you don't even think it's a past life memory. But if you want, you could take the floor real quick, or you could just type it in the chat, however you want to do it. But tell us a little bit about it. Um, I don't think I got a memory because I don't remember anything. Like, I don't know. Do you remember the dream or it was a flash of some sort of vision you got where there was just like a lot of water and there was like a storm or something like that? I don't know. I'm trying okay. to remember. There probably was, but... 
Okay, that's okay. Does it does it feel right a little bit? Yeah, it does. Okay. If you haven't got it yet, you're going to get it because you had so much power with water as you do right now, as you see. And I'm excited for you to use that water power because, oh my God, like when I see, when I view your timelines, I look at that, I'm like, oh shit, like, don't play with Aaron, dog. <laughs> yeah, I'll use my water on you. Yeah. <laughs> and making storms and stuff. Whoa, it's crazy. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Aaron. Aaron is awesome, bro. So, Ali said astral. Now, if you guys want to delve into the astral, let's do it. You guys just guide me on what types of areas of the astral, because again, that is a very broad term as well. But you guys could let me know what generally about the astral. And I like using visuals. So, oh, okay. Maybe this, maybe we're meant to go here. Ooh. Ooh. This website, bro. This website's fire. Let me say that, okay? I used to go on this website when I was little from back in the day and I was into astral projection, but it wasn't so popular. Okay. You know what? Looks like... Let, let me see what we got here. Paradox, realities. Click realities. Oh, this is the one that goes deep into the astral. Okay, let me see what I can find because this one is so cool. Just just looking at it right now, you guys can see this is a bomb ass website. <laughs> okay, I'll delve a little deeper because I don't know how to get to the astral parts. But you already know how this goes. Um let's go here. Oh, let me try searching it right here. This has the most, the bombest stuff. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, that's a conversation they're having. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit of this to you guys in one second. Let me just look at the comments. The website is... It's called astraltraveler.com And... Let me click one of these because when I click these, there's a certain way it shows it, but it's not showing it like how it did back in the day. Give me one second. As you can see, it talks about you could go into reincarnation, you could go into chakras, karma. This website is really in depth. I'll I'll hand you guys this fast. I'll put it right here. So you guys can delve into that on your spare time whenever you like. Um, but you know what? How about we talk about how about we talk about meshing the astral and the physical? Because that is one big thing that all of you are doing right now. Now, at this mode, we still look at astral projecting and dreams as something separate, something on the side, and we see the physical as the for real for real. But that is sort of what's going to keep you in a low state or like in a trapped type of state where the physical is is the only for real for real because for you guys a lot of you this is some of your first times being in a physical body in a long time and i know what that's like for sure having i want okay i want you to see all of these realms as real Okay, so don't separate it. When we say the physical, the physical is everything hard, everything that you touch with your physical body. But you have other awarenesses or levels of you. Look at your, look at, look at the universe like how it has chakras, just like you do. You have lower chakras and you have higher ones. When you operate from a higher chakra, you still use the lower ones. You don't abandon them, right? Look at it like that. So when you, all beings in the universe, they look at the physical as like, almost like the base of the universe. And these higher, these higher densities are like the higher chakras of the universe. So when you ascend or your soul ascends, you are essentially going into the higher densities of the universe. But this is the thing. If you exist in lower dimensions, you can still perceive the higher ones. 
but it's a little bit different because you have a physical vehicle which is linked with the physical so your soul is it's just like when you're when you're in a car literally and you're driving and it's literally the car that allows you to go on the roads and stuff like that and exist on that level that is what your physical body but when you go dormant when you go to sleep your physical body is going dormant so you have dreams and you astral travel that's because your awareness when you look at it like this right away so your mind stops like um when your mind starts clouding things right i want you to look at it like this okay the guides are guides are telling me to go a different way when you travel or when you go dormant of course you're going to sleep but your soul and your consciousness still has experiences things it wants to do just like you're like i want to ask project i want to do this i want to do that you go there but this is the thing your mind is linked with the physical form it is one of the things that helps you link to the other dimensions just as your heart does which is why people can get lost in the physical and then they mistake it for not real but it is so no matter what when you're dreaming or you're traveling your awareness is there you're experiencing something that is beyond the physical realm you see what i'm saying so you are still you wake up and you're like whoa that was a crazy ass dream or oh my god this and that happened or i did this and no matter what people will be like oh that was just a dream or you know it's an astral projection and labeling as just a dream even no matter what whether it's a dream realm or astral realm your awareness is going there and now you could consciously do this traveling in these other dimensions through conscious astral projection or lucid dreaming things like that those are conscious travels so you all of you here agreed to be in a physical body to help the physical beings on this earth to ascend you guys came from the other higher dimension said all right we're going to help other people here but that means we also have to have a physical body so you agreed to be here but you'll notice it's easier for you to move energy easier for you to travel easier for you to do anything that's linked to the higher dimensions because you are from there and you have more experience there okay so it's going to be way easier everything's going to be simpler because you are from there so the only way to the only way to fully be on the level of the fourth dimension or the fourth density let me correct is to either astral project or go to sleep and travel in some way that means you're on the same level so when you guys hear me talk about beings i fight and i'm like okay there was um like there's these reptilians at the skate park you guys hear me talk about and a lot of times they're they're either physical beings or they're astral beings linked to a physical being and manipulating the physical person so overall you'll see reptilian beings like you'll see them walking we, we could touch more on that in a little bit but you'll see them physically but sometimes they're not they don't have physical forms where they're literally shape-shifted where they're still they're just astral beings attached to somebody and you know the person's a reptilian but you're like okay well what type of reptilian are they literally shape-shifted or are they someone who's been taken over quote-unquote possessed by a reptilian and i say possessed because it looks a little different than literally having their body taken over it's happened slow so they program the person to have to be on a lower vibration so have negative thoughts negative emotions feed on their fears and insecurities to the point where the being is literally just taking the wheel and is now doing whatever they want with the person so you guys will see me fight reptilians that aren't shape-shifted say there's like one on a kid and all the kids in the town are like oh we hate this guy um he's doing weird stuff and this guy was doing weird stuff and he would say weird stuff that was reptilian he'd be like i can't wait to eat you later and stuff like that but i knew this kid was not one himself that he had what on him so i've been look i was searching for this reptilian for a long ass time you guys see me talk about this on youtube a little bit and it was about months i was searching for this guy and i had some of you guys help me i want to mention that is that the server is meshing into a real astral kingdom we're going to do so much stuff on the planet and a lot we're going to do we're going to be traveling together we're going to be doing these assignments together 
because we're literally on this planet together on this big mission okay take note of that so some of you we would go to the astral to fight this this alpha draconian and it was hard we fought him for about a month i think it was and the way we got it off of the kid is i would in the physical work with him and i would have to do things like i would have to do some chess moves like i would have to pay some kids to be like yo get people to leave him alone and then things will be better and i would work with his parents and i would work with the kid one-on-one -on -one. and then we would go to the astro and i'd be like you you guys ready to fight you guys ready to do this and so that's when i'm talking to the kid the alpha draconian would talk through him like we'd be talking about art and he how he wants to get into art and stuff like that and then all of a sudden he would say something weird he'd be like are you sure you want to do this and this was the day that i was like i'm gonna fight you i'm gonna fight you man i'm gonna fight you to the being and he said are you sure you want to do this and he texted me that and it was so random and i knew it was the being talking through him because he would do that multiple times and i basically told him i said i'm sure then we went to the astral and we were fighting him he's gone now and let me tell you the kid's doing way better he was sent to the most he was essentially sent to the most top therapist in canada no one could help him but i couldn't tell his parents there was a draconian like a archon draconian on him but now that we fought it in the astral and we fought it physically in that sense physically and astrally we mixed the both realms and we fixed what was happening now he's doing way better so i'll say this you need to be able to mix the both realms because even when you're in your physical body, you can still perceive the astral realm, right? You, sometimes like if, if one is on a being, like on a person, sometimes maybe their eyes will shift and you'll see it turn to like a reptile eye for a second or something like that, right? Like physically, when you're in that physical realm, you can still perceive the astral realm. All your clairs, all of that stuff is just what helps you perceive the astral realm while you are physical. But then when you go to sleep, or you say, I'm going to do an astral projection and however you do it, you're going on the same level as that being. Do you see? So this is what I mean by mixing and not seeing them separate. Like right now, at this exact moment, all of you are in the astral realm, but you are in your vehicle. So then you have to rely on your abilities and be able to perceive clearer, feel energy, see things. But then when you go to the astral, it's like clear as day, right? You're, you're just on the regular level with them. So hopefully that helps you guys see perspective on mixing the astral and the physical. And then we're going to get into 5D in one second. But let me read some of these comments real quick. You know, it really is. I have so many dreams about this server. I've literally dreamed about texting someone in here when I'm in trouble in a dream. And I literally get stopped almost every time. Either my phone gets taken or I get attacked. The whole plan for this server, can I say that, was for this. We are still searching for our people on Earth. And we're still doing what we're doing. We're collecting. And the GFL has been giving you guys lots of assignments. They're picking up now. Again, I'm bringing up 20, I always bring up 2027. But that's because that is, that is the moment that our family is going to come down. But we are in heavy drive because we got a lot of people to protect, a lot of things to do to get humans ready and to keep balance. Because you see how the Archon are doing, how they're trying to keep humans on a certain level of consciousness with either celebrities or actually this is the this is th this is World War Three. You guys already know this. And I want to tell you guys a few secrets. OK, you got to promise not to tell anybody, but I do have some affiliations with the government and they are aware of what we are doing so if you at all feel like this is not important this is very important and it's super fun because we've all been doing this for thousands of years and now we're on earth and we're like all right let's go so keep it fun because this is fun to us but no oh you guys are incredibly important do but i gotta let you know that yes it feels like they know so much about us trying to fight them but the government look at it like this there's governments that are supportive of the galactic federation agenda and some that aren't canada is one of the good guys you could say quotations good guys all right they are positive 
or they're fighting for the positive agenda. And then you see, you should just look at it like this. I love how Rena used to tell me this. She's like, any people or groups of people you see online that are looked at as really dark and they're like push it like oh they're evil most of the time they're good and the ones that are labeled as positive and here for everybody they're dark so you know exactly what i'm talking about and this is why this server is a safe space for all of us and i always say if you guys want to talk like one-on-one -on -one with people we have we also have our chats which are outside of the server and stuff like that but we always come back here as home base because here is a safe space we're protected not just with each other and we keep unified with each other but you know we have heavy surveillance and here we have very less of it it's almost 100 percent gone and so I'll, sometimes i say to you guys i'm like if you guys are trying to do like a chat together with people use the galactic chat rooms in the server because then you know for sure it ain't going to be bugged. And that's why we also have like people like the Defense Force who are really good at, at basically protecting the server. Their, their role is to protect the server because they're, they're always on the lookout for infiltrators or when energy moves and they're aware. Like you see the, you see the guards, they're like, hmm, I noticed something's different about this person. And then those those people could go to somebody, like the teachers would be like, can you host a class? I noticed people's energies are going lower and it's causing this. Or um, I'm a guard and you know what? I realize my assignment is with this person that just entered the server. We're going to get a lot more agents coming in once we are ready. Once the whole server is ready, there's going to be thousands of you guys. We talk about this. There's going to be thousands of people in here. And then you guys are going to be in mission mode all around. Like, all you guys are going to want to do assignments here. You're like, all right. Like, I see, I know, because the GFL told me these three people are my assignments, and we're doing that stuff in here. That's what's going to be like. I know I'm excited, too. It's going to be amazing. We're almost ready. Is it bad if you get kidnapped by the bad guys? I mean, it has happened a few times. I was dreaming and a bunch of people were taken to and I got scared and I called my guys and they told me I wasn't alone. I was surrounded with light and long story short, broke out, freed a bunch of people, but I was exhausted after because I've never fought with like light energy before. And another time I got kidnapped, a few people from here had to come and get me. You guys work in the astral too. So, you guys are going to be doing missions and assignments in the astral. Some of you will be going to, like a lot of times, we'll be going to Mothership to get some more info. And then maybe we have um, an astral trip to go. It's like, Ash is like, oh, I have, I have this Alpha Draconian trying to take over my area. And then a bunch of us are like, we got you. Like, let's go and fight it. So then we go to sleep and we all astral project and do what we can there. The ones that can do it physically, they do in their assignments physically. And the ones that can't and they only could help astrally, they're going over there. So this is a big thing. Oh, I want to mention this. Some of you, if you know about uh, some of the missions that we are trying to do, like, for example, I'll bring this up. A bunch of us talked about going to New York astrally to help fight. Now, we were made aware about the work we got to do soon or the plans that they have to do in new york and you guys know new york energetically how it is so we knew that at one point we had to actually travel there as a big group and help fight the archon draco in there so at new year's time there's going to be a lot of stuff happening they have some sort of planned attack and the gfl told us and i thought personally to be frank i was like oh you know I guess I'm not going to be involved because I'm doing all these other assignments. Like that's when a car was in big mode and other beings or a car, meaning the Alpha Draco we were fighting here. And there was so much more happening. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not going to be part of it. And then they kept, they kept saying, no, 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 you're going to do it. You're going to be in it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, it, it makes sense now. And, and I just kept being led to it. So some of you, or as a collective in the server, we're going to be like, bro, all of us are astral projecting over here where the gfl told us we got to do some work and some of us that are physically there we're doing our assignments and missions so then all of us as a collective are going to be traveling over there to help fight as a collective together and that's what's going to be it's going to be fun as hell man but again we're still all in training doing what we do and i want to let you know you will have fights like that 
in the astral, which is why I keep saying astral training. You're getting training in the astral to be able to fight better astrally and to be able to defend yourself astrally. Okay, you guys want to, I'm going to be frank with you guys. You guys know I like to be transparent. I talked about my experiences with, um, what are they called again? Basically reptilians who are, that feed on your sexual energy. You guys know one of my powers I've noticed I have was always like, I, we just call it in here, love power. And yes, it was, the, it was the incubus. Yeah, thank you. And so I noticed one of the weaknesses weaknesses quotations with my love power or love power that you guys have you'll notice is sexual energy you have a lot of sexual energy but if you don't use it properly or hone in on it the, the archons can use it against you which is what they were doing with me so i had that relationship with that incubus for a whole year then i realized what it was doing and i was like all right i ain't doing that no more and then recently though they keep sending more so the one they tried twice bro they tried twice this was three days ago went to the astral and i like to go to the astral fighting pits where the astral fighting pits are where a, a bunch of astral projectors around the world and other beings could come and fight in these like basically astral pits and basically everybody fights each other in like this big game and it's super cool you basically get astral clout so beings just know who you are because they've seen you fight before especially in the physical as well and it's fun training. You're just going to want to go there to have some more fun, right? And so I remember at one point I went to the Astro and I was in a mission. See you later, Ash. Thanks for coming. And so I was in, I was, I, I was in my house actually. And I went downstairs and then I was talking with this one kid, which I thought was, you know, literally him in the Astro with me. I literally thought we were national together. And then he pulls me in the bathroom. And then he's he's like basically getting real sexual. And I'm like, whoa, bro, like, chill out, right? And I was like, all right, like, what's up? And he's like, I love you, I love you. And of course, us with the love power, like, whoa, like, right? We love love. So I was starting to give in, but then I was like, wait a second. I said, Are you 18? And he was avoiding the question and and saying stuff. You know how the reptilian, the archon reptilians do. And I was like, all right. I said, pause. Are you 18? And he said, he was avoiding it. And I looked at him and I said, he said, no. And I said, listen, my career is too important to me. I can't affiliate. Like, And as soon as I said that, he cut me off. I didn't even get to finish. And this man literally shape-shifted into a reptilian his eyes had like this yellow they were like yellow eyes like reptilian yellow eyes and he morphed and turned to a reptilian and yelled in my face and it scared the hell out of me i was like oh shit and i went like that and i woke up i was like whoa like it scared me so bad i got out and i was like damn like the fact that it tried to trick me like that in the astral like i thought we were in the astral with my homie and do you see how they do this physically, though? How they literally, sh like, the ones that are shape-shifted physically, you interact with them and you guys know. We, we could talk more about that if you guys like. I don't talk enough about my experiences and what got me here, but um, I will start to share more because I know it's beneficial. But I was friends with a lot of reptilians uh, physically. And the way they deceive is crazy they get you to trust them and they get you to they really pose as your the good guy but the energy's always off like sometimes energy pains like you know like especially if you're an empath being around someone egotistical it's really painful to be around them and i noticed they had that and then i realized they're reptilian later and it was it broke my heart but astrally they could trick you and just like i said there i thought i was actually rejecting with my homie and it was it was an archon reptilian so they will pose like that too and that's what i mean by mixing the astral and the physical because do you, do you guys notice with that story how it's literally the same thing it's literally the same thing just in different realms and these realms have different rules like rules per se in their density right so it's literally the same thing but different densities 
yo, I might as well pull up. And it's mainly for fun and training, at least when you just go for fun. When we fought the Alpha Draco, though, it was in a pit because that's how they like to fight. Yeah, basically, we were fighting him. You guys don't know too much about that. But uh, for those who don't know much about it, um, essentially, I finally... So I was fighting a lot of the reptilians around my town. And especially the kids that were like, yo, these these reptile people are everywhere. And then I knew there was a boss. I was like, I know there's a boss guy. And then it got to the point where I, I knew he was attached to a physical person. And then I found the kid. Long story short, the kid's a reptilian starseed. Um, but he can be manipulated to go to the dark side real quick. And lo long story short, you, you just know who he is. And it was attached to him huge. And everybody in the town hated him because of the stuff he would do but he wasn't like that before and his parents were like we don't know what's going on so i asked genie genie was one of the people uh flame of lyra aka broly was one of them and then for a little bit we had Ange come in too and so those were the three people in the server so far that were helping me and we would go to the astro and we would fight him i was like I, I was like i finally found him and you guys know marissa right the little girl um i told her i was like i found I found the boss reptilian the alpha draconian she was like and you know she, she's real good she's like i know and i was like how'd you know how'd you know she's like oh my angels told me and all that she wanted to help fight him too so we were doing what we could physically and then we would go to the astral and we would fight him and at one point we were fighting him so much where he's like you know what let's just fight in a pit we'll fight in literally an astral fighting pit and we will see whoever wins my town caledonia becomes their territory and so i agreed that was a night where the kid said are you sure you want to do this and i said yep let's go so all of us went into the astro and we fought him in the pit and we won and that was crazy because we've been fighting him over and over for about a month and we couldn't win and then we finally got it and um then he left like just the whole town felt better people were like how come how come the town feels good today and i was just like i got you right wink i got you so we fought really hard and we did really good so he wanted to fight in a pit but from then on that's what triggered me to be like you know what i want to actually go to the astral fighting pits and train if we're gonna do something like this more it's so i never knew that alpha draconians like to fight in pits Looking in their history, I saw they would do, but I didn't think they still did. But he wanted to do it. So that's that's a little bit of astral warfare for you guys. Um, looks like we delved into that with Psionics real quick. So essentially, we're all going to get there. Some of you aren't like warriors where you want to fight, but you're here for healing. Like you want to go to the astral and help do certain things. And you're good with grid, energy grids and all that. So I'm not saying you have to be a warrior. We don't need every we can't have everybody a warrior we need a lot more of other things especially a lot of uh like we have people that are good with astral jail people that are good with um certain civilization interacting with certain civilizations healers huge angelic powerful warriors we have so much we have a huge team here an army an army okay and you know they see us and the government's been watching us real good okay thank you i've been thinking about reaching out to you lately yes i want you guys to continue to communicate with each other and learn from each other and we're all gonna essentially unify in a we're already unified but i mean unify even closer than we are now yes we definitely need healers as well for sure we were i remember we were going to fight in the astral and it was so it was way harder than we thought. We woke up the first night. We were like, oh, shoot. Like, we thought that'd be easy, but it was not. And so then we were like, all right, guys, let's train. And we were training together in Astral for a month before we could defeat that guy. I've been busy with readings and editing content more tired lately. Yo, I've been tired too, to be frank. And I've been doing a lot more understanding a lot more evolution with myself as we all are so 
I want none of you to feel like you have to be at a certain spot where you know you're going to be or you feel like it's going too slow. We're going to get our time and we are just growing at the moment. We're all in training for our roles. Each of you are starting to know your role in terms of what you provide everybody with in the kingdom. Everybody in this kingdom is important no matter what you do. Without one of the, we're literally cells to a body. And so whatever role you feel most aligned with, whether that's a healer, teacher, warrior, protector, commander, general, whatever it is, each of them, like we always talk about, have their role. So you're feeling that out too. You're seeing your skills, your powers, and how, what role best aligns with your skills and your powers. And then you do that. So you are benefiting all of us with that, with such things. Can you train in the space station all safe? There was, I trained there first. Oh yeah, hell yeah. I never thought about that. Thank you for bringing that up. There's so many different areas you could train. Listen, me, I say, I say the astral pits and stuff like that because I just like to, I like to learn as I go. So I like to just fight and then learn skills from that. So I do it very rough, but some of you, you're going to want more of a safe spot, like where you go to mothership to train or you ask your guys, can you take me to this planet to train? And then they're going to take you there, all that type of stuff, wherever you feel comfortable. Okay. I'm just giving you ideas on what you could do. Let's look at, there are training grounds, me and hypnos design too. Okay, I'm, I'm going to check that out, Robbie. I'm going to check that out. That's crazy cool. Should pop up in the space station again soon and give training. Yes. You guys are amazing. You guys are cool as hell. I love you guys so much, yo. Ali said, can you tell me what I am? Ali, are you referring to... Oh, give me a little details on what you want me to help you out with. You could go to Antares too and fight beings from different realms. I was doing that last night. Yup. So cool. Yup. Antares is a good spot to train. They got they got those areas where you could fight. You could literally be fighting in other like battles off Earth. Or you could do like set up battles on certain planets like Antares. Antares got a lot of those where you could battle other beings there. There's so much you could do unlimited, but that's, I, I honestly, to be frank with you guys, try and do as much as you can on earth because we're on a mission right now. So like you could go visit your star family and stuff like that, but they're going to be like, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be on earth and they're going to, they're going to keep it. It's like literally like going to war and then you come back and visit your family and they're like, Hey, hey and they know it's only going to be a short amount of time before you go back to wherever the war is on earth. It's literally like that you're on a mission on earth. So do what you can. If you got to go training back home for a little bit, or you got to take a little astral vacation, whatever you got to do, but know that everything we're doing is for earth, not earth. You're fighting for the galaxy on earth. And soon you guys are already starting to get physical encounters. A few of you have gotten physical encounters with some GFL agents, but you didn't even realize it because you already see where we're going right so before 2027 we're all going to get physical contact with them and it's going to be like we're having physical interactions instead of just astral so do what you can on earth which is why i like the fighting pits because it allows me to still fight and train staying on earth but if i got to or i want to i'm gonna head out right just for a little bit ali said starseed or my heritage. Okay. You have the Syrian is big right now for you. Syrian is big right now. Oh, and your guides are pushing Orion, bro. They pushing Orion. So it's Sirius and Orion. And if that doesn't fully make sense, know that um you have a lot of affiliation with water beings. So there's so much like dolphin beings. Um and there's some octopus beings. Things like that. Very water-based beings. And um, in Orion, oh, you had affiliation with Mintaka. 
and then you left and then there was some sort of warfare you did in orion you fought a lot in orion but ali your intuitive abilities are strong you you've seen it already you're getting visions of stuff you notice that and you heard tell tell us about what you heard the other night you were like hearing like hearing something you were hearing like astral noises of some sort she said a little bit my my ear hurts me i don't know okay so it looks like you're gonna start getting clear audience all right so you're getting your clear audience kicking in so you're gonna start to hear just astral noises like you maybe hear doors opening and closing when there's nobody in the damn house you know you're just hearing the astral okay expect that you're you have activity or you're gonna hear activity in your house if you haven't already because you have some beings that are affiliated with you that are trying to communicate with you and and you have some spirits in your house i think you know that um but yeah that's that's super cool so you have you have a whole training ground around you so everything that's happening right now is helping you get to that point that you are trying to be at right now this was my dream the other night does this sound like ash projection okay let me read that in one second Ali said, I tried to remember and everything. Okay. Let us know how that goes, okay? And you know we're here for you too. So use your power and you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna be experimenting and all that, like we all are with everything in each of our journeys. So experiment and try new things out in your house and with these new abilities you got, okay? As long as you stay open, you good. It's just gonna feel adventurous and kinda Sometimes a little scary because you're like, I don't know what to expect or if this is going to work, but we're just in training. Okay, let me read what my boy said. He said, <clears throat> dream started with me looking at the sun, which turned black. Then the entire sky turned black and I could see super far into space. I was looking at Jupiter and Neptune first, then went really far to planets from different galaxies. It was like I could select them and just go there. I went to this planet that had loads of moons. It kind of looked like Mars, but its moons weren't going around the planet properly. They were just going, they were just doing their own circles and the moon's orbits formed like a spiral funnel going downwards toward the planet. After that, I woke up. Ooh, that was a clear astral projection. Yeah, you was just doing some traveling. Your awareness is expanding beyond earth do you see like look i'm gonna look at this real quick so you said right here it started where you were looking at the sun and then it turned black or purple and then the entire sky turned black or purple do you see that's literally opening you're literally looking at the sky and it's like it's universe is opening up and you're like yo and then you start traveling and you're seeing solar system and the galaxy and then the planets and other galaxies your awareness is literally expanded so i want to say congratulations and now that you have a map of the universe or at least the galaxy, now you could travel. You could just say tonight before you go to sleep or in the day, you're like, I want to go here. I want to do this. But this is the thing. I want to mention this to you guys that want to astral project. If you just say to yourself, oh, I'm going to do this. I want to do that. And it's not deeply ingrained in you. Like, I want to do this. You're going to forget when you go to the astral. You go to the astral and then you're like, oh, well like you do something different than what you plan to do that's because you didn't ingrain it in your energy when you travel you have your thoughts in your mind but then when you go astral you forget a lot so you really have to say deeply i want to do this and you feel it in you and there's a deep energetic passion for going there then you'll do it so make sure you you're not just like oh yeah i want to do it you're like i want to go there I like for you, for example, my man, you're like, okay, I want to, I want to go to, um, I want to visit one of the planets I incarnated on. And in you, you're like really deep about it. Like, yeah, I really want to visit some of these planets I've been on. Right. Then when you go, when you go to sleep, you are going to go there. Whether you remember it, how much you remember is up to your astral awareness and how much you also allow yourself to remember. But overall, you went and I want to tell you guys this as well, a good astral secret, is if you forget where you went, you're going to feel where you went. 
So like when when me and some of my homies in here when we fought that Alpha Draco, we didn't see all the memories. All we did was get flashes of like the pit and like flashes of us fight together, maybe get hit a few times. But then when we woke up, I was like, did we did we win or like what happened? And the energy was so relieving, like we won. And I analyzed it in my own energy. I was like, whoa, we won. And then I texted, of course, I text Genie and Broly. I was like, bro, we won. They're like, yeah, we won. And we were talking about it. It was real cool. So you, before you know what happened, you know what happened. And then you go with that. And then when you dive into that energy, you could set that to get a few flashes. But just dive into your energy. If you're like, oh, I don't. I, I wanted to go here, but I don't remember anything. Feel. You're like, okay, I didn't go, but I did this. I did something else. Or whatever it is, right? I know, right? We slayed it up. Big facts. I had to feel into it to understand what happened. Yeah. And then I smoked and saw it more. Yeah, you already know me. Me and Jeannie love using cannabis as a tool for divine purposes. So whenever we want to understand something more, we just smoke a little bit. And we only usually do it. I only usually do it at night and he does it whenever he has time to really dive in and he wants to. He'll smoke and then he'll get all the insight. So for you that are of age to use cannabis or you like you're not nine. OK, <laughs> and you're using cannabis um, responsibly. Or you mushrooms responsibly, you're gonna find it's a bomb ass tool. Thanks, bro. This helped clear a lot for me. You're so welcome, bro. You're traveling a lot. I'm liking it. I can't wait for you, man. Sometimes when you're recording what you are recalling, you could feel and channel what you did. Exactly. Exactly. You just ch you honestly just feel it, and you could meditate a little bit, and then you'll get you could like literally channel like you said channel what you did maybe you get flashes or you see um certain things or you feel it or you hear something you're using your clairs to basically sense bro remembering everything is so tiring on the human body so i purposely make myself forget as long as i remember a little so i know what i was doing i am fine yeah i don't want to remember everything either i don't want to remember everything because it can be draining only certain things i want to remember it all so that when i go back physical i'm aware i'm like okay 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 we're not doing that again or we got to make sure we do this this time but only certain times i'll remember all but other times i'll be like that's not necessarily for me to remember like you said it's it's taxing on the human body on the physical body in your physical body and it's also just like it's unnecessary like why do i need to no, I did this and I did that. I just did it and I go about my life. Oh, Blue Lotus for sure. My cannabis, when I smoke it for for the conscious purposes, it always is mixed with Blue Lotus. Blue Lotus cooks. You already know it, bro. You already know. Uh, let's see here. I think I started connecting with my ancestors more because when I was listening to a song... I started getting flashes in my mind's eye, but they were so fast. Actually, I want to talk to you about that rainwater because you do have a strong connection with your ancestors right now, especially the ones that you have some ones from. Do you, do you know about your ancestors in like the south? It's like Florida, Louisiana area. Do you know about those ones? Because those are some big ones that are connecting with you right now. They want you to know about your power. I remember you telling me about that. Oh, we did? Okay. Okay. So they're definitely coming through bigger and bigger more and more. You already know what's up. The big thing with them is their history and um, essentially it's, it's the slave days. So they want to empower you. What do they want me to know? They want you to know they want you to dive into the power of essentially they keep calling it the power of being black but i want to rephrase it so it's more modernized the power of your african ancestry they want you to use because you you have some like uh 
I'm just lack of a better word because it has negative connotation voodoo that is within your blood that you could use and harness and the power that they had from fighting the masters and fighting and what the, everything they did to basically get the rebellion rebel against slavery all of that warrior spirit is inside of you so they want you to at least remember or at least have it in your awareness that you come from warriors physically and on a soul level and that's really cool. 12, 12, 2, 2, 2, 2. Yes, sir. Yes, soldier boy, tell him. <laughs> Bro, that's been my new quote. Soldier boy, tell him. <laughs> Does anyone know about jellyfish beings, bro? Okay, wait, let me finish reading this. I found out I was one at point. If no one knows, it's cool. I got a book that mentions them, which I'll read soon. I'm learning about jellyfish beings right now. And it's in that, um, in the Aliens World Encyclopedia that we read in. Yep, it's in there. So I, I was actually drawn to read that part soon. Whoa. Jellyfish beings are cool as hell. That's the book you're talking about? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Soldier Boy, tell him, bro. Yes, sir. The book is too damn good. The Drago fam is cooking. You know how we do. You know how we do. Rainwater said, I figured, I I think just recently I read somewhere that there was a war and that they thought that voodoo was used to help them in win, winning the war. And I can't remember exactly what I saw that though. Okay. So you, you know, they put it in your awareness big time and they have you diving into it now. So you're not going to essentially do voodoo, but you are going to use that power you have within you for certain aspects and with your understanding of it you are understanding the true history and the power from within your physical blood okay and you already know about generally about some of the power of your soul blood so you got that but physical blood you got some powerful genes and dna i would love to help you get deeper into it with you if you like got family everywhere see you have a strong ass family who's gonna support each and every one of you all of you we're a support system for each other i love that i'm so happy for your rainwater this is gonna be really cool for you okay did you guys have any questions or anything you guys wanted to touch on real quick or maybe you wanted to share something I do have to go in 10 minutes, but um, this would be a good time to have a little open talk about some things, or maybe you want to have some questions answered, whatever you like. Go on ahead. All ears. Let me take off this screen because we, we sit here staring at Astral Traveler. <laughs> but remember, this is a good website for y'all. Are you able to help me with any succubus energy I am battling? Interpret my dreams of late. So, the succubuses, they feed all on your sexual energy, which means you're going to have to do, sometimes you're going to have to do some sort of, um, what do they call it? Um, like some sort of semen retention at times. You're going to have to control your sexual energy. You're going to have to learn how to master it and use it. That's one big thing I want to let you know right now. And so that is one huge way that's going to help you in battling succubus energy and keeping them away from you. And also be aware of where your sexual energy is going, where you put that sexual energy. That is a big thing as well. So if you're battling the succubus energy physically, like you are, we, we call it being horny. And it's like you, you have that desire for sexual encounters. How are you funneling that energy? Where are you putting that energy toward? And is it is this sexual energy going in a more positive light? Or is it bring you down the more negative spectrum? You could use that energy, right? And so you know it's succubus energy when it's all... Um, it's all... I'm looking for the smart word for it. 
lust when it's lustful really lustful and it gets stronger and stronger that is what the succubi will use not saying that means the succubus is attacking you but that is what they will use to attack you you see what i'm saying so as long as you know how to control yourself you are mastering yourself on those terms you're fire Rainwater said, I think my clear abilities may be getting stronger because I keep hearing clear voices wake me up. And also after I got sick, I think it was upgrading me because I think I've been traveling a lot. I even went to go see you unintentionally, I think. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you always notice when you sick, you travel a hell of a lot more. Yep. Actually, at one point liked being sick. I could just sleep all day and just ask to travel all damn day. Yes, sir. <laughs> But your abilities are growing, yes. So you are you already went through a little upgrade. Yeah, we call them upgrades. And so you've been getting one. So and you've been getting a lot of if you haven't yet, you've been you're gonna get a lot of ear ringing and almost like you're you like the the noise change all of a sudden you can't hear out of this ear, you can't hear out of that ear anymore. It like shifts like you've been experiencing because they're they're twisting, they're changing your um clair audience. And they're making it so that you could hear different frequencies and they're going to test out how what frequencies you could hear from so they're going to be like they're going to say things or shout your name or or make noises and see okay at what frequency can rainwater hear and so they're gonna they're testing you out a lot it's amazing to see us rising together i'm telling you yeah yes it's and it's sometimes it's hard to hear. And I even switched out my crystals from amethyst to clear quartz. And yes, I've heard a lot. Yeah, so it's um, it's it's gonna shift and it's changing. And it's like especially the ear ringing. Whoa, you're gonna get a lot of those as you already been getting. So it's it's just changing. You're you're getting your clear audience is gonna be very strong. Did you see my DM on Discord? I did not. I think I need to. I need to make sure I have you friended, um, but I'm going to look for your DM after, okay? You know what? If you guys want to get in touch with me one-on-one, -on -one, I, I answer way quicker on Snapchat. Snapchat's like, I call it my workplace and like my, my social area. So if you want to talk with me, you could go there. Whatever, Andy. I, I feel you. I feel you side-eyeing me, bro. <laughs> you guys know I get busy, though, but Snapchat is where... I, I see your, your message come up and then I can answer you quicker. And he side eyed me like this. He's like, dog, <laughs> why, why are you? Andy, you're the best. Also, I heard pressure before I fall asleep. That's how I know it's time to go to sleep. Ooh, they, they saying, girl, get your ass on the bed. <laughs> well, that's funny. You should look into meme compilations Amira made. It's perfectly depicting your daily life. Did, has she? She used to send me some memes and they were funny. Oh my god. They were they were so funny. She made one of me and I loved it. I want to... Can you... Luca, can you send me those ones if you got them? Because I, I want to see those. Yes, and you guys could add Aaliyah on Snap too. She's got you guys real good. You have lots of people who got you here. And yes, we're all at different levels of our journeys and capitalize on that. So if you notice someone in the server is a little bit more advanced in a certain area than you, you know that they got you, right? We're family. So you go to them and you good. And we're all learning from each other anyways, no matter what level of consciousness we're at at this moment. Thank you, Cash for Real. You really helped me understand my new family, if you know what I mean. I got you, Robbie. And you know what? Can I? I really do want to go visit your family, um, your star family, because I really want to talk with them soon. So if you are willing to show me around some of your your family's planets, I would love that. I've seen them, but I haven't seen them. Oh, that'd be beautiful. I would love to have that experience. 
they're very like shielded with astral travelers that's why i'm asking you too i'm like like if i try and go even if i try remote view i'm like okay like i'll step back <laughs> like they they really are very weary of travelers and stuff so yeah i'm trying to have you escort me in <laughs> imagine you escort me in and i'm like okay bye and then i like run around you're like wait <laughs> Y'all could come to me with witchcraft. Ari's got you guys. Ari's got you. And she's advancing so well in her journey with her powers in witchcraft. So, or you know what? You guys know I don't like saying witchcraft with a negative connotation with majory. <laughs> with being a mage. So you guys could go to her with that as well. And Ari, I see what you're doing with Obri and Rowan. And I see, I see your realization with them. So i'm loving that <laughs> and they tell me about it too i was just i hang out with them or i talk with them basically every day and i see them physically almost all the time so they tell me about you they're like we love ari we love her so they love you so much we are overprotective of where the families and children live okay okay makes sense Okay, I think we touched on everything that we were supposed to today. You guys know I like to keep um when it comes to psionics, we go we go very natural with how it's supposed to go, so we talk about whatever we're supposed to. I feel like the next one, so I think I'm going to uh let me just check my schedule real quick just to make sure. Okay. So Tuesday I'm going to do our next class tuesday again and we'll do same time um and that one i have a strong feeling we're gonna end up talking about tulpas a lot and astral traveling a bit and portals so tulpas are gonna be big i want to mention real quick just to plant so it can marinate in your head for next time is that i've been strongly needing to use tulpas more like my one i gotta turn my computer my one stuffed animal you see right there the red dog i got gifted that and I use it now as literally a dog in the astro. So physically, I literally see it like a literal pet. Because when in the astral realm, it is literally a pet. Or you guys know we don't like to use the word pet, but companion. So I realized I needed, I don't just have my guard protecting the portal, but I have that tulpa on that, um, on that stuffed animal because I was getting a lot of astral creatures come in and stuff and i was like all right like the stuff with the astral spiders i was like all right i just need this dog to to get rid of them because they nap oh they're so nasty and i tried fighting in different ways and i was like all right you know what where my dog at <laughs> where my dog <laughs> so he's really protective over me so if y'all have to protect my room he's gonna come your face man he's gonna come in like that because he's very protective. Um, Someone asks, homie asks, can anyone tell me what Estelle is that Cash talked about in a recent Instagram video? Okay, I can explain to you a little bit. Stelles are crystals or it's essentially a tool you could use to activate certain ruins. So you guys know I have the ruins on my body. So when I want to, hold on a second, I'll, I'll actually go and get it. Wait, what's that? So I bought these ones to use as stelles. So what I'll do, I actually had another crystal and you guys see like, like the one that's on my neck. I literally would just go like this, like this one stands for Lyran family. So what I would do is say I needed more power from the Lyran family or I wanted to remember more. I wanted to dive into it more. I would literally just take my stele and wave it over it and you feel it activate like it gets hot. And then you could feel it emanating and then you're like, all right, it's like it's, it's in that mode. And all of a sudden you dive into it. And so any ones like the one on my arm, like I have that one and I have this one. This one stands for warrior. So like the one that's on my arm here stands for fire dragon. So whenever I need my fire dragon energy, say I'm out, and there's a lot of shit happening. I really just whip my stele out and I go like this activate it and i put it back in but i i be discreet with it because people will think you're 
they'll be like what are you doing or whatever so maybe i'll just go in the washroom real quick and i'll roll up my sleeve and i'll activate it or if i'm under the table i'll activate it real quick and it helps me out so we call it a stele but it's just a a, a ruin activator um you could even use it to write certain things on like a astrally on a wall you write certain ruins you can literally use a stele for anything energetically or like a wand that mages will call it they call it like a wand you could use a stele for that and this one specifically has i think this is the flower of life on it and it's selenite i love selenite as a stele just the best one so that's what i do when I first saw Cash's Astral Dog, he was running around and messing up his house. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had to train that thing, bro. I was like, all right, chill. Especially the barking. I was like, okay, bro. All right. <laughs> all right. So what I do now is um, I'm like, listen, just any astral. You're here to watch over any astral creatures with me and for me. Um, don't get riled up by just beings walking in. Be calmer. This is what I mean by programming tulpas. Getting them, you're, you have to let them know what their purpose is and what they actually do in order for them to do their purpose. Using a stella to activate your weed. Yup. I actually like that you bring that. That you bring that up. I'm going to go now. Thanks, Cash. And I love you all. Love you so much too, Aaliyah. Thank you for coming. So... I actually use it to cleanse my weed. I get my my joints and I literally cleanse all the energy, old energy off and I program it with a certain energy and then I smoke it. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, literally use it for anything. At the end of the day, all of you are probably going to end up having a stele. And you may not use it for ruins or writing stuff. Actually, like even writing ruins in the air, like when you want to write a ruin or or do something maybe you want to make an astral wall you literally take your stele and you just go like this you make the wall again when i mean literally anything literally anything your stele has got you and if you watch shadow hunters you you see all about the stele in there <laughs> is it different from other crystals a selenite for sure selenite's very astral so it's more connected with the astral or you'll feel it's more powerful um that's why like when i want to astral project deeper i either one wear a selenite to bed or like i said i have that selenite sword that's always right there and i put it beside my bed that always or you put a selenite under your pillow and if you have a stele that's selenite you good but at first i used um hold on i'll get it. it's literally right over here The first one I used was this one. It is, I think it's Smoky Quartz. Yeah, it's Smoky Quartz. And I use that for bed. I literally just wave it over. And it's powerful too, but I noticed the most powerful one is Selenite. So you could use anything really. Oh, I love that Selenite, Robbie. It's so cute. <laughs> I have selenite beneath my pillow and I have dreams of being Walmart version of Batman. Bro, I can't. Why do you have to say Walmart? <laughs> bro, I love that. I love that so much. You and you, you see selenite just puts you in the astral realm powerfully. That's why I always say to people, I'm like, you if you're gonna put selenite under your pillow or you're gonna wear it to bed or put it beside your bed, be ready. And they're like, oh, and then after they, the next morning, they're like, yo, and I'm like, I told, I told you it's going to be powerful because it, it puts you in the astral realm even deeper. Whoa, rainwater. Yo, that one looks so damn cool. What? That's powerful as hell. And you'll notice with selenite, here's my other selenite that I use when I have clients. You notice just touching it, it makes this noise. Listen, this is a little ASMR. It makes that noise. And whenever you move it. And it's just always making this like 
magical noise and its iridescence. Look at that. This is the most magical crystal. And anytime you touch it or move it, like I'm just I'm just literally moving it. It's making this noise. I'm not even purposely going like this. Magical ass crystal. And it cleanses all the crystals around it. So um, like you guys saw my YouTube video or oh, I didn't even put it yet. I have part two of my room tour. I'm still editing and you will see I put all my all my jewelry I have on anything I wear. I put it on the selenite plate after so it cleanses the energy. So it's ready for the next day. So the next day I just take it off the plate and I put it on. So selenite. One of my favorites. I love the wands because you can literally feel the energy. I've used mine for healing as a sword and to clear my energy. Yes. I like them as wands too. And I'm only just started recently using it more like that. So that's so cool. And you use it for healing. That's even better. That's amazing. This is what I looked like. I lost it at some point. I don't know where it went. It just vanished. It's time. It's time protecting me with and it was probably over. Or it's time protecting me was probably over. Okay, you had a guardian come in for a bit. I only had that once before. I had an interaction with a dark witch. It was actually a follower I was talking to. And she was um she I knew she was a demon demon quotations but i kept affiliating talking with her and then this big ass being came in my room i was like whoa even the guy i was on facetime was like whoa who's that big ass guy in your room and i asked him like what are you here for and he had a deep voice like i'm here to protect you and i was like from what and he's basically like your interaction with a dark being dark person and i was like oh shit <laughs> And then I realized it was the witch, it was the lady. And it was that's another story for another day, but you guys know I have endless stories. <laughs> but yeah, that big ass guy, I was like, oh damn, like what's good? I had to dive up like this. What's good, bro? I had to dive up in the air. <laughs> well, he was big as hell, dude. And then he left after. But yeah, some of you guys will get those too. I say all of that. Just in case you get that and you're wondering what the hell's going on, it's because it's sent to either give you a message or protect you, something like that. Just dial them up. You see them, you're like, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, what's good, bro? <laughs> also, Agate is following me everywhere. I look at Crystal or want a new one, I choose it. Sounds like maybe you're finding a soul crystal. So cool. Not the Walmart version. <laughs> Yo, you guys don't know when to quit. <laughs> Luca said, did we have the duel already? I got some flashes a few days ago. I don't remember at all, actually. I actually don't know, to be frank with you. Andy said, I had some badass tulpas as kids. Had this monkey plush and I made it a super warrior ninja with tape, lol. <laughs> I treated it like it was real, undefeatable being. That is the skill of creating a tulpa. See, that, you're so good at that, man. You're so natural at that. Look how easy it was for you and how smooth, how slick you did it. Whoa. That's my dog. Yo, dip da me up real quick. That's my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> I can't wait to meet all you guys physically. Lucas said, did we have... Oh, I already read that. Um, After this class, I need to watch more of your videos. And I need, need to make more videos. You guys just know I've been so busy. Frankly, uh, when I say busy, I mean... I've been doing a lot around the town and then Toronto to set us up. To get place set up for us so um in my town right now i'm setting up an area so the kids that are in the town that are that are star seeds i have them together and then they're going to come to the server you guys already seen some of the kids in my town come to the server slowly so i'm trying to gather all of them up together 
Uh, so I've had a lot of assignments like that going around my town doing stuff and setting up Toronto for us, which is going to be our space, our capital. Okay, so I'm setting up as much as I can for us, but I'm also trying to rebalance um, all the things I want to do, like make videos and all of that. So, oh, I have some stuff related to Drake to tell you about. That's a whole nother thing. When you're, um, I totally forgot we're still recording. When you publish this, Andy, could you just cut out the last part where we were talking about, um, like <laughs> when we were talking about, uh, Drake or anything that's kind of, that was just meant for us. Can you cut that out? Thank you. Totally forgot about that. Okay, and I stopped the recording as well. Is Doja Cat alive? Doja Cat is taken by the Archon. She was one that was taken by the Archon, so not much we could do there. We have a lot of celebrities that we're going to be helping. One of them is um, Drake. Drake I've been getting a little closer to. And he's considered like the king of Toronto or like, yeah, that's the only way to explain it, the king of Toronto. And so um, there's a lot of affiliation I have to do with him soon and his son. What about Selena Gomez? Oh, Selena Gomez is good. She good. Okay. My cat probably waiting for me to pick it up physically. <laughs> Every time I think of Drake, I think of Jimmy from Degrassi. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I haven't heard someone say Degrassi in a long time. Oh my god. Oh, Kanye West, he, he good. He's actually suffering from the attacks of the Archon. As you see. Okay, Selena is on the fence. That's that's frankness, to be frank. She's on the fence, but she's good right now, but she is on the fence. If you notice these celebrities start to get more ego, just look at it like this. If you start to notice they get more ego-driven, you know what's up. You know what's up. So it's like they're on the fence. It's like they're good, and then they start to get more ego-driven slowly. You know they're getting catched. The Kardashians are the definition of, of being taken. Like they work for the, the Archons. They're considered royalty of Earth or dark royalty of Earth. Just like we have a lot of others like um like like Beyonce. They're considered royalty of Earth. It, in a way. Overall just leaders of Earth. But their thrones are being taken off as you see. Their power is being taken away because we're shifting into the new version of Earth. And the new leaders... The new people are going to be people like you guys. If you guys want to know more about some of these actors and see their journey, you could watch this one guy on YouTube. His name is... Actually, you know what? Let me just show y'all. Um, before I go, because I do have to go in a second. I have a meeting in eight minutes. Um... Let me share my screen. So check out this YouTube channel. This guy delves deep into, you know what? Let me go into my watch later. Yeah, you guys are getting a peep into my YouTube channel here. Um, here's a whole bunch of shit I laid out to watch later. And look at this. I already I already watched a documentary on on Logan Paul. I already got a briefing from the GFL about Logan Paul. And so I was like, you know what? Can y'all help me understand this more? And then I got sent the documentary. And then I watched a whole bunch of stuff. Ooh, I love the Kardashian ones. Ooh, those ones were fun to watch. Um, I still have some like these to watch. This is interesting. And you guys see that I have all these other things to watch. But, oh, Travis, oh, I don't even want to say that man's name. 
Huh. You know. Um, Eminem, I don't know much about him. And Tom Holland was pure. And they're trying to take him. They're trying to take him too. Just like they did with... Who's that other one that looks like Tom Holland? That pretty boy? He played in the movie The King. Not Holland. Um, I think some of you know who I'm talking about. Playing the movie King and Dune. That they're they're tr yeah Timothy yeah they they trying to take him, they trying with him or they they did take him, they they cloud them with ego oh we'll make you famous you'll get money if you do this and you do that you follow our order so a lot of them don't even know they're part of the agenda, and then they get taken. Is Kanye Kanye's alive? Yes, yeah, he is. That's why he's with Kylie now. So. If you guys want to understand more about the celebrities and where they're going, look look at like this YouTube channel um, and watch these type of things. This guy's good. King of Nothing and Patrick CC. I love his stuff. And you notice that this year alone, all these videos are coming out about celebrities coming out or like exposing celebrities. That's because it's the truth is coming out now about everything. It's time. And they're being taken off their thrones. So when I saw this, I was like, Ooh, let's go. And it's all just coming out this year. I was like, wow, so it is time. Watch these. Uh, the Justin Bieber one may be sad. Essentially, um, Justin Bieber is the physique of a Pleiadian. He looks just like a Pleiadian. And he was like um, an experiment. Or he up. Okay, you guys already know everything that's happening on Earth is essentially like what happened in the galaxy. So what's happening right now, everything that's laying out right now is supposed to happen for the evolution of humans. So it's all happening because all this shit happened back home. So what we're seeing here, we're all like, yeah, like been there, done that. We've seen this before, experienced this before. And if you don't know, you know, you feel it. So all of this has to happen. Like on some of our home planets, we had people like the Kardashians who were ruling the entire planet and then were taken off their throne. All of this shit has to lay out so that we then we're going to be put in the front. Yeah, I'm going to watch this one about Drake and Josh. I want to understand that one. But whenever the Federation wants to give me more briefings on stuff, they were like, get ready. We're going to teach you about being a celebrity and what that really means. And the 5D version of being a celebrity. I was like, okay. And then they gave me some briefings that night. And then randomly, I opened YouTube. And then I saw these ones about the downfall of celebrities and the things on them. And I was like, okay. So the Federation will give you... um they give you briefings telepathically and energetically and physically literally okay you could even just ask them for stuff and then they got you when are we going to get put into the front 2028 yes i honestly to be frank there's like bridge there's a gap it's like 2027 2026 to 2028 you're going to notice some of you get more famous like for example aliyah is going to be one of the like celebrity influencers so people are gonna be watching her all over the place just as like genie he's gonna be watched all over the place everybody's gonna be watching him so all these things but we're not ego about it we're like in our hearts we're like we know this is our role what we gotta do and we're all just in training to be seen and for things like this this server is gonna be physical we as we know so i always keep repeating we're in training because if we we still have to allow humans to play out the time that they're supposed to experience. And then we are going to be put in the front. Okay. People mind, people's mind uh, will be more open in 2025. Yes, exactly. To higher information. So we'll start being known way more by then. Yes, you guys will notice you're collecting a crew. Just even where you are in your town or your city, you're finding them and you're collecting them you see your assignments is to get them to understand help them remember and get them into a group and then essentially later bring them into the server or bring them to the gfl and their awareness of their work with the gfl or ask them if they want to work with the gfl things like that but you're now allowed to expose that you work for the galactic federation just so you know okay so you're allowed to say that now but you're gonna know when to tell people when not to 
and all that. Well, I got stories about that, but I do have to go now because I do have a meeting. Um, but yes, okay, let me head out now. <laughs> and I'm going to come back later, not today, but maybe tomorrow. And I'm going to, you guys are going to see me in the Galactic chat room talking a little bit. And we can talk more about this stuff, especially working with the Galactic Federation if you like. Um, I'm so glad you guys are here with me. This was an amazing time to talk about psionics. And I'm going to book our next one for next Tuesday. It's going to be amazing. And remember, get all your questions ready, whatever you guys want to talk about. Let's dive into it. I think I need to make a separate class on what it really means to work for the Galactic Federation. And then we'll dive into the timeline for humans and and what things are going to look like. So if you want the timeline shit, um, let me look at my schedule real quick. Maybe Saturday. Um, just keep an eye on the events tab and you guys will see me we're gonna talk about that i love you guys so damn much and we will talk again soon okay see you guys later